Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. session of the 2017 Open Simulator Community Conference. As a reminder to our in-world and our web audience, you can view the full conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. You can tweet your questions or comments to at OpenSimCC. Um, you can also use the hashtag, hashtag OSCC17. Our next session um, I'm really excited to introduce is 40 Virtual Cities Online. And our speaker today is Krister Lindstrom. Krister is the CEO of 4 Dialogue and has since 2008 headed the development of the virtual city concept. In 2017, he initiated the UIDC project, which stands for Urban International Design Contest. Today, sponsored by several well-known organizations that he's going to talk about and government agencies. So I want to pass the mic over to Krister. Krister, thank you for joining us. Hi, Michelle. Thank you. And um, I hope I, everybody hears me okay. Yes. Okay, good. So I'll just go ahead. Uh, okay, hello everyone and, and thank you for the introduction. So uh, I'm going to talk about, we have currently about 40 virtual cities available online. About 20 of them are available right now. Some are archived. And our intention is going for way more, at least 4,000 into year 2022. Um, so what why are we doing this? What, what, what is our mission? So it's, it's very basic. We want to provide easy, uh, tech, uh, easy to use technology to plan for sustainable urban areas. Uh, that is the main objective and mission for, for what we are doing. And the focus is to develop and market technology for urban planning, focused on smart cities and public transportation. Uh, and this has had uh, quite interesting consequences. When we did this in the beginning, very few people had any idea what we were talking about. It was quite interesting to see. And, and eventually, um, using 3D models for urban planning has, of course, uh, skyrocketed. But there's still some confusion about what is 4D models. And uh, not until this year, um, more and more um, people and, and customers we're talking to are slowly catching up to what this is all about. And I, I would like to use this opportunity to applaud the, the Open Sim community for the work they have done for, or you guys have done for many years. So that had, what we do have never been possible without your work. So it's been uh, very important for us. Okay, so um, so in order to achieve four thousand cities or whatever number we're striving for, uh, you need some kind of strategy. And, and the first leg, we have three legs in our strategy. And the first leg is, of course, doing city models uh, using the team we've had for several years. And we call it the 4D team. Uh, so from 2018, we are now using these three different parts of our uh, organization. And the 4D team, what they do, they do direct marketing and sales of 40 city models. Uh, and the customers are usually cities. It, it can be an airport. Uh, real estate developers, transportation authorities and planners, and of course, related developers. Uh, we have uh, a website under, under development. It's not ready yet, but uh, that gives you some kind of understanding where we're going with this 2018. That website will not be launched until 1st of January, but uh, I, I think it's okay to give you a sneak preview of where we're going. Uh, the link is citymodelsonline.myfreesites.net. Uh, and of course, you're going to get some ads and things there, but uh, just just because we're using this site to to play around with with the, uh, the coming website. Um, okay, so uh, that is the basic strategy for do the 4D models, and and we have quite a few of them um, uh, right now in Europe. Uh, I'm not going to list all of these. These are most of them are existing. Some are archived, and some some are still uh, in, under planning, but uh, most of them exist today. So we have models in Belgium, for example, at Antwerp, uh, several different models in Sweden. Uh, the most extensive are, for example, in Södertälje, Sundbyberg, and, and Gävle. In the U.S., we have a couple of models. Uh, some of the most um, uh, developed ones are around um, Mountain View, for example, and Aptos in California. We're working on that right now. 
Uh, we have a model in Perth, Australia. That was a part of UIDC. Uh, we've done uh, Cape Town, South Africa, and uh, we have uh, quite an extensive model of the airport of Stockholm in Sweden. Um, of course, we still we just started doing logistics, and it's actually not directly the harbor, it's actually the, the logistics area to the harbor. And we have a couple of campuses, and right now we're negotiating with a few industries, that's just one of them. So it's not only about having um, city models, it's also about doing using this technology with immersive software and transportation and movements, and of course simulations for different kind of logistics places, uh, such as industries and airports. Um, so that was the first leg. Now we have started to develop what, uh, what uh, Meg was just talking about the, the university involvement or the UIDC. Uh, we had a pilot this year, so we had six universities and city teams uh, doing real studies. Uh, the idea was for them to show how a future city would look like. Uh, and uh, there was a couple of spe specific rules. Uh, one of the rules, it had to be uh, uh, some kind of innovative transportation systems as autonomous uh, public transportation like podcars, PRT, APM, or, or, or a lot of these buzzwords flying around like uh, around these uh, autonomous vehicles. The only thing they could not do was autonomous cars. Uh, we think that is something we're trying to avoid. We don't think it's possible to have an autonomous car uh, and, and, um, and a sustainable city. It doesn't compute to us. So uh, we focused on doing most of all uh, transport, public transportation systems. Uh, this year we had six participants, three from the US. Um, it was Jacksonville, Washington DC and Las Vegas. It was one from Australia, Perth. Um, and the, um, it's actually a vendor there, a developer of technology in, in, in Australia together with the university. And in Sweden, we had two teams, one for uh, this, uh, the city of Sundberg, that's a very close city to Stockholm, and, and the city where I live myself in Gävle, north of Stockholm, is about um, 150 miles away. Um, so um, the idea is to expand this quite a lot next year, so we're looking for 24 teams, and it's been very easy to roll teams so far, actually. Uh, we might end up in a situation we cannot accommodate all who wants to participate. We will see what happens. But the idea is to have, to have 24 teams to, to uh, um, do different kind of models together with the developers and cities, etc., and present them at the conference in, in, in uh, October 2018. I'll say more about that. If you, There's two links there. Uh, one is the Facebook link for the UIDC contest. And I'm also put in, I'm sorry, it's a bit complicated, but it's a link there also for the, uh, um, uh, for the winning proposal. And I'm going to show you now just how they look like, just briefly. The winning proposal is the big one on top. Um, I I'm going to halt a little here. It seems to be some kind of technical malfunction going on right now. Do I need to be concerned about that or can I just continue? Just continue. You're good. Okay, thank you. So, um, so the top image there that is the Sundberg, the winning proposal. Uh, the two students spent all together about 250 hours, and they did. I think it's a two-region model um, that was very nice. I have to say that all these models are available uh, in a couple of the links. I think some of them are provided, and some I can provide after this um, presentation. Uh, lower left is Perth, Australia, uh, and uh, then, no, sorry, Jacksonville, and then we have the second from the left is uh, Washington, D.C., the third is Perth, Australia, and the fourth is Gävle down there. I did not include uh, Las Vegas because the students kind of misunderstood the task, and it's not worth looking at, actually. Okay, so, um, so how do we do this? So how do we put everything together because we're having a lot of teams doing different kind of models all around the world with the 4D team that is doing professional models on, on behalf of customers who ask for them. And then we have the second team who do everything uh, with students. So what we do, we bring it all together at the conference that has been ongoing since 2008. It's called the Podcast City Conference and we have approximately sometimes around 80, 100 people and sometimes up to 250. So I would say average 150 participants. 
and it's a transportation professionals specifically specialized in, in urban um, transportation systems that is autonomous and, um, uh, of course, solar or um, renewable energy driven uh, and um, uh, used uh, together with city planners. Basically, minibuses and, and, and vehicles in the air or on the ground. So what we do here, uh, we use uh, these teams uh, to, to present their IDs and also we use all the cities because there's a lot of cities coming to these conferences. So this tool, this OpenSIM uh, development tool, we use it to educate people. So it's basically an educational and um, uh, marketing tool for how you can make a city more sustainable using new modes of transportation, but also other things, not only, only about transportation, it's also about how you can change the urban landscape using better, better housing, better development, and basically uh, retake the urban uh, landscape away from the cars. And it's quite an interesting conference. Um, so a couple of examples, we, we were right now this year in, in Las Vegas. Uh, let's see here. Um, so we were in Las Vegas, it's called Podcast City and Advanced Transit, and there you see uh, this um, self-driving little minibus. Unfortunately, the first thing happened after just 30 minutes, they launched that, uh, after years of, of, of uh, uh, preparations, it actually crashed. <laughs> it didn't crash itself, it was a semi, that semi-trailer that actually crashed into it, it was standing still. But uh, that was not too too nice. Um, fortunately, uh, or, or I would say fortunately, the good part of that was it got a lot of publication, a lot of publicity because of it. So, um, so how do we do now? How, how do we expand this? How, what can we do to to get more cities going from four to four thousand? Is that possible? Well, yes, we think so. Um, Right now, we have about 40 cities. Uh, we're using approximately six uh, people on staff and a couple of university teams. Five of them did the, the modeling. Uh, it should be six there, actually, six university teams. And, and next year, we expect using the UIDC and the expansion of the 4D modeling. Approximately, we will have an inventory of about 110 cities. So that's basically 70 more. Uh, we need to expand our staff and have more university teams, of course. And when we do um, our studies and uh, the expansion rate, we expect to have 2019 approximately 400 cities in, in our inventory. And uh, um, as with the linear expansion or slightly logarithmic, we approximately to expect to have 14 staff and 40 university projects. So following this log, log, um, analysis, we, we expect to have approximately actually 4,000 at the end of 2022. Um, it's a lot of work. We're going to need a lot of resources and we're going to need a lot of support also from the OpenSIM uh, community to do this. We are considering uh, either additional ways of, uh, ways of doing cities, like, um, crowdsourcing, maybe getting involved with the OpenStreetMap community and uh, many other ways to, to get this expanded. Uh, the number of universities we have contact with right now are about eight, uh, and we expect to expand that quite uh, um, uh, to quite mu much larger number in a couple of years. Uh, there are also exchange programs. So what we do is we have students that are doing this as part of the tuition, and they're getting points for it. And uh, we today have one ex exchange program between the University of Southern Illinois and Javelin University in North of Stockholm. And we also hope to have more um, collaboration projects together with San Jose State University that are running another program adjacent to this program. Um, I have a lot of techno technology and, and um, other issues to explain uh, if people have questions. So I decided to actually uh, just stop it here and say thank you for now. Uh, since I expect that there are probably going to be quite a lot of questions because when I do this regularly, I, I don't know, but usually I get a lot of questions based on this. So thank you. And Krista, thank you. Um, you know, and I'll, and I'll start with the questions because I find this fascinating. So um, the goal is you're actually going to work with city developers to help them plan their cities. Right? Yes, that's what we do every day. Yep. And... Um, 
And part of that you were saying is the public transportation part of it. It, it is usually not always. Uh, we do <laughs> have projects that d does not involve public transportation. But uh, that is usually the most common way for us to get into a project. So, uh, with UIDC, it's compulsory. Uh, for, for the four-day project, it's not compulsory. It can be anything. We actually have a, a light rail projects. We have a biking projects even uh, in Uppsala. So, so um, uh, there are other ways to get into uh, a deal to make, make a 4D model for a city or, or any kind of development. Uh, but the usual way in is that somebody wants us to do something that is related to urban modern transportation using um, self-driving uh, minibuses or similar. Ah, uh, yeah. I do have a question from Bethany. She wants to know, um, did you mention uh, working with San Jose State? Yes. And what do you, what's that project? The project is called SMSSV or Spartan Superway. If you, if you Google uh, SMSSV or Spartan Superway, you will find the INIST team doing uh, um, autonomous transportation. Yeah. And then um, Edith was asking, this, can this be used to synchronize t train routes? Yes, that is actually what we're doing right now in Jävla. Okay. I, um, I see here that somebody on the text that... Um, your team builds the same replica for the city. Yes, it's kind of it is a replica. And Bethany says I'm I'm with San Jose State University. And yeah. she should look for Mr. Buff Furman. <laughs> there you go. Or or uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Nixon, Hillary Nixon. Mm. So what will the next contest be? It will be in Jävle, Sweden, in October. Uh -huh. uh, it's going to be as I said. We expect about twenty four different teams. Um, we're not going to have all the teams come to the conference because it will be too much a logistical problem because they're going to be all over the world. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have um, um, contests, um, preliminary contests, one in US, one in Asia, one in Europe, etc. And we're going to have the best teams from each region or, or continent to come to Sweden. So the total number is 24, but not all 24 of them will come to Sweden. We don't expect them to come. So, so we actually pay for their trip. So we cannot pay for all. It would be too expensive. Now, um, Cyber Serenity is asking, how do you get the vehicles to work? Do you have special modules? For that? Yes, uh, we have developed special software for that. Uh, one is for uh, in-world uh, with uh, uh, OpenSIM. But as I, there was a previous presentation here, and. Um, uh, with Maria, and, and uh, I mentioned that we actually have developed special software to convert a region or several regions into Unity uh, because okay. we have better ways of controlling cars and we can also communicate better with, for example, sensors. So we, in the city of Jävla, there are uh, um, five different sensors measuring air quality, uh, the, the um, different kind of gases, etc. And in real time, you can actually see in the 4D model uh, what is the um, what is the quality of air in the city right now, the, regardless where you are? And that is actually a um, Unity application derived from the model we did in Opsen. Great. And um, Art Blue is asking, how much of this is actually Open Simulator or is it web based? Um, so I would say all the production is used uh, is done more or less in an Open Sim. Uh, we do use Blender for roads and specific stuff. We, we do import things uh, through SketchUp and, and different kind of CAD packages, but we find most of the um, most of the buildings and different objects made externally to be way too heavy uh, when it comes to vectors, and, and uh, we, we need something that is light because we don't want to make the OpenSea model too heavy. And then uh, when the customer wants really high quality, OpenSIM is not good enough. So what we do, that's why we export stuff into external software to polish it up and, and make it more architecture-like and more, more uh, glossy, if I may use that word. And someone made the comment, an OpenSIM business that makes money. And, and the appeal here is, is that you're helping uh, cities save a ton of money by giving them uh, their ideas in this virtual space, right? Yeah, and, and uh, more and more cities are catching on. So uh, we have quite a quite a market right now. 
Uh, we're still not profitable. We're still uh, using investor money to do what we do, but we do expect actually next year to be profitable. And, and the turnover um, revenue approximately five to 600,000 next year. I bet you the developers love it once they actually understand what it is you can provide them here. Yeah, it, it's, it's quite an interesting communication. There are people who do not like what we do. Uh, and um, it, the reason is that they don't they don't want to change. So we actually encountered people who says no, we don't think this technology is interesting, and and it's just something that um, looks good but doesn't really do any really, has any real purpose or use. Mm -hmm. But uh, few that's fewer and fewer saying that, and more and more people actually adopting our technology and getting interested. Not only interested, but actually using it for their own development. A couple of cities has decided to use this technology only for all communication with their citizens. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and one last question, because I'm just curious myself, too. Uh, your background, were you a developer to start with, or how did this idea come about? Well, I'm a politician and musician. That's what I am. Ah. So, yeah. <laughs> But but uh, I, but I, I am a programmer too. I did some programming for a couple of years, but I'm, I'm not programming anymore. Yeah, I, I do this because of my background and my interest in sustainable cities in the early 2000s. So I've been interested in that. Uh, and I've also been quite active in politics in Sweden for a long time. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I want to thank Krista for being here. Um, I want to remind the audience, uh, you can see what's coming up in the conference at conference.opensimulator.org. And following this session, the next session will begin at 10 a.m., uh, the first digital biennial. Um, we also encourage you to visit the OSCC 17 Poster Expo in OSCC Expo 3 region. Um, we're going to have breaks and lunch, and you'll be able to walk around and check out all of our expo regions. So for now, we will take a break and, and switch out our speakers. And thank you very much for listening. <laughs>